Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the allowance method for bad debts. If you're new here, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn. We're working our way through the financial accounting chapters. So we're in chapter 8, accounting for receivables. And so I've got articles, playlists, videos. And so let's get started with the allowance method. Now just a couple little notes here. I've got previous videos in this playlist, so you might want to check out the playlist. I'll link to it below. There's two methods to account for bad debts. There's the allowance method, which is our gap method, and the direct write-off meth method, which is the tax method. Now, when we do allowance, there's two different ways to calculate the allowance. You can take percent of sales or percent of receivables. And percent of receivables is sometimes called aging of receivables. So let's get into some problems here. Now, I did some problems on a previous video, so I'll link to that as well. So let's say that we have the West Company, we have sales of 950,000, we have accounts receivable of 88,000, and we have allowance for doubtful accounts has a $750 debit balance. Now this problem, we're gonna do percent of sales, percent of receivables, and then we're gonna write off an account using the allowance method, of course. And then we'll have a question, why is there a debit balance? So let's do the first one. What if we estimate bad debts as 1% of sales? So what's our sales number? Well, our sales number is 950,000. And what's 1%? Well, remember 1% is 0.01. So if we take 950,000 times 0.01, then that gives us $9,500. Now, what do we do with that? Well, that is our bad debt expense number. So we're going to debit bad debt expense and we're going to credit allowance for doubtful accounts. We can abbreviate that uh, a little bit if you want to. And so the entry is 9,500. All right, so let's think about what our allowance balance would be. We start with a $750 debit balance based on the given information, and then we've put in $9,500 as a credit. So what is the balance of our allowance account? Well, it's going to be $9,500 minus the $750, and so it's $8,750 is the balance of the allowance account. All right, now what happens is, what does the allowance balance do? Remember, allowance is a contra asset that reduces net account receivable. So what is our account receivable balance? What's well, 88,000? And then what is our allowance balance? Well, it is 8750. I'm going to make that negative so I can just run the math here. And so 88 minus 8750 gives us 79,250. So our net account receivable is also could be called the net realizable value. This is how much really we think an asset that we have on our balance sheet is for account receivable. This is net account receivable after we've made an allowance for any of the ones that will not be collected, any bad debts. All right, the next one down is let's estimate bad debts. Instead of doing a percent of sales, let's do it percent of account receivable. So what is our accounts receivable? Well, our accounts receivable are 88,000 and 8% is 0 0.08. So if we multiply that out, 88,000 times 8%, we get something like $7,040. Now, what do we do with that? Well, because it's percent of receivables, this is what we want the allowance balance to be. So we start with a $750 debit balance. We know that already, but we want the balance to be a credit of $7,040. So how do we get to $7,040? Well, these are two opposites. So we're going to have to, if we made a credit for $750, then that would be a zero balance for the allowance account. So we've got to take the difference here. So we're going to take the 7,040 plus the 750, 
And so the difference will be 7,040. Because 7790 minus 750 gives us 7,040. So if we subtract going down, then we kind of add going back up. So what entry do we make? I'm going to copy here. What is our journal entry? Well, our journal entry is for the 7790. So we'll say, our bad debt expense is 7790 because we know we've calculated we want this number, 7,040, to be 8% of accounts receivable. So we back in, and here's our journal entry number. So bad debt expense and allowance for doubtful accounts is not the number we calculated originally. We have to back in and find this number. So that's the number we're going to use. Now, what if we actually have to write off an account? Now, months and months later, we find that the Philip Co., the Philip Company, cannot pay their bill or writing off that account. So we're going to debit the allowance for doubtful accounts and we'll write off their actual account and the amount is $440. Now what does that do to our allowance balance? Let's assume that we did the percent of receivables. So we know this is $750. We know this is $7790 and we now have debited this account for 440. So what's the balance of the allowance account? Well, it's going to be 7790 minus 750 and minus the 440. So now our allowance for doubtful accounts is 6600. Now let me ask you a question here. Why would there be a debit balance of 750 at the beginning of the period? Now, Anytime, look at our two entries here for the allowance method. Anytime we uh, estimate, we credit. So all the credits on the right are estimates. And all the debits on the left are all actual. So what that means is our actual bad debts were a little bit higher than our estimated bad debts. And we're okay with that. We know we're not going to be perfect. It's an estimate. We need to estimate just so we know that we're not going to collect everything. Our assets would be too high. The valuation of the accounts receivable cannot be 100% uh, collectability probably. And so we want to make sure we don't overestimate the assets. So why is there debit balance? Our actual bad debts was greater in the previous period than our estimated bad debts. So we take that into consideration for our current estimate and we go on, okay? All right, next problem. Let's do another allowance method, except now we're gonna have a credit balance of 650. And we're gonna have sales and accounts receivable, and we're gonna have different percentages, a different amount to write off, and we're gonna have a credit balance beginning in our allowance for doubtful accounts. All right, so if we estimate bad debts as 0.75% of sales, our sales are 1.2 million. Now, this is three quarters of 1%, so the, the decimal is 0 0.0075. So if we multiply 1.2 million times that 0.75%, we get 9,000. Now, what do we do with the 9,000? Well, remember, that's our journal entry. Our journal entry is bad debt expense. And we're going to credit allowance for doubtful accounts. And the amount is 9,000 here. All right, so what happens to our allowance for doubtful accounts? Well, we have a $650 credit. We just dropped in 9,000. So now it has a balance of 650 plus 9,000. So 9,650 is the balance in our allowance account. Now, what if we decide, let me copy this. What if we decide that our estimates are 8% of accounts receivable? Well, what is accounts receivable? 
8% is 0.08 as a percentage. So we get 7848 looks like. 7848. Now, there may be some pennies. We're not going to go to the penny level. Uh, whole dollars would be completely fine. So what do we do with that number? That 7848, remember, is the balance of the allowance account when we're working with percent of receivables. Now we already have 650 as our beginning balance that's a credit. And so what do we do with our 7848? Well, we need to take 7848 minus the 650 that we already have in there. We need to make an entry for 7198. So our bad debt expense is 7198 and our allowance credit is 7198. All right, a couple more little questions here. What happens if we write off the account? Well, anytime we're on the allowance method, we write off an account, we're going to say allowance for doubtful accounts and credit accounts receivable for the Allen Company. And the amount is 780. 780. Uh, what would happen to our um, allowance balance? Well, we already know we have two numbers in there. Uh, well, let's see here. We got 650 and we got 7198. Let's do it that way. And then we know we debited it for 780. So what do we do? 650 plus 7198 minus the 780. And what we have is the balance is going to be 7068. Now, why would there be a credit balance? already in the allowance account. Well, we thought about it earlier. Remember, anytime we estimate, we credit that account. Anytime we write off the actual bad debts, we debit that account. So there's a credit balance when our estimated is greater than our actual bad debts. All right, hope this is helpful for you. I've got several videos in this chapter. Please like, please subscribe. If you put comments down below, questions, that's very helpful. So we'll see you on the next video. Good luck in accounting.